We all want to be more profitable in business. Show me the money! Show me the money! And one of the most important things you can do to increase your profits is understand how much it should cost you to acquire a client. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you can come back again and get simple strategy to help you grow your business. I'm Amy Walker, client acquisition specialist, and my job is to help you find the simplest path to consistently finding your ideal client. Digital marketing changed the game and for good and bad, right? Like it made it so much more accessible for small business owners to market their business, but it also made it so much more competitive. So today's average small business owner can't just open up shop, provide a great service and rely on word of mouth. We've got to get ourselves out there, but we're doing marketing strategies that used to only be accessible to big businesses with big budgets. And so sometimes what happens is you jump into the marketing without having all of the data that the big company would have. The data that you need is what we call key performance indicators or KPIs. And your customer acquisition cost is one of the most important numbers that you need to know in order to make sure that your business is going to be profitable. So before you're out there spending money and hustling, and spending time trying to get new clients, make sure you understand this number because otherwise you could find yourself selling a million dollars and it costing you $999,000 in order to get there. And that you guys is no fun. So let's do a review of what a customer acquisition cost is. This is how much it costs you to bring the client in. So it's the marketing cost, plus it's the sales cost. And it's not the cost of fulfillment. It's just the amount of money that you have to spend to get that client to say yes. And if you wanna learn more about that, make sure that you go watch our video on what a customer acquisition cost is. So when we look at our customer acquisition cost, let's also look at the other expenses that are not included in that number. So for example, operations cost is not included in that number. So if you have a building or you have a light bill or you have a CRM or you have um, you know, any other services, phone services, any communication type stuff, IT, all of that is in your operations cost that is not included in the customer acquisition cost. We also have our profit. In the book, Profit First, it teaches us that we should set aside a folder of money that is just profit. It does not make sense to run a business and not have profit. So we need to plan for that number. And then the, the fourth thing that I like to plan for is a growth fund, having money to be able to bookmark for growing our company. If we want to expand or we want to bring in something new, if you're only ever planning your numbers based on where you are today, it's really hard to grow beyond that. So it's important that we look at all of these numbers to make sure that overall we're getting where we want to go in order to be profitable and growing. So question for all of you, when you look at your business finances, are you bookmarking money for profits and for growth funds? If you are, just leave us a yes or a no in the comments below. So now let's circle back around to this customer acquisition cost. Understanding that we have to look at customer acquisition cost, we have to look at operations, we have to look at profits, and we have to look at growth funds. Now we understand why this number becomes so important. Because what if it costs you $1 to get $1? you're going to be losing money every single month. Even if you're spending $1 to get $2, that's probably not going to be enough to cover your operations, your profits, and your growth fund. We want to see ourselves at at least one to three ratio. If you can get beyond that, that's amazing. But if you can get to at least a one to three ratio, that's going to really set you up for being successful and having a profitable business that is able to grow. So let's use an example here. If we have $30 per lead, and this is what I hear quite often from clients is they'll say, oh, I'm getting leads for this much money. That doesn't really mean anything to me because I don't know how much it costs you to get the client. So yeah, you spent $300 per leads. Let's say you generated a hundred leads. That means that you spent 3000 on your marketing. And out of that, let's say that 15% of those people actually schedule a sales conversation. So now you'd be talking to 15 people. 
If you're closing at 25% close ratio, now you've closed 3.75 people. If we divide 3,000 divided by 3.75, it is costing us $800 to get a client. Does this make sense? And these numbers, you guys, it's not that far-fetched. I see numbers like this on a pretty regular basis. So we have to be selling something that's at least $2,400 in order to maintain that one to three ratio. If you got these numbers and you were selling a $10,000 product, you'd be super happy. If you got these numbers and you were selling a $1,000 product, that $200 that's actually profit is not going to be enough in order to have you be able to pay your operations Re maintain money for profit and have a growth fund. So you've got to make sure that these numbers really are lining up. In the comments, I'm going to link to a HubSpot article that kind of shows you some industry standards that might be helpful for you in your business. So for example, in the travel industry, they're looking for a $7 customer acquisition cost. Retail is 10, consumer goods, goods is 22. But if you go up to like banking and insurance, they're about $303. Technology software is about $395. Um, business services and consulting services, it is not uncommon to be at like $700 to $800 to acquire a client, which is why when you look at coaching programs, um, you've got to be pricing yourselves accordingly. So now you can see why coming in as the low cost budget offer is not always going to enable you to be able to scale your business. So let's review. When you're figuring out your customer acquisition cost, you are looking at the cost of the marketing and the sales. What does it actually cost you to bring in a new client? You've also got to keep money aside for your operating expenses and for your profit fund and also for a growth fund. What that means is we want to have a one to three ratio where for every dollar we spent to acquire a client, we can expect $3 to come back in return. If this information has been helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want more help on your sales and marketing system, I encourage you to go and take our sales and marketing GPS. If you tell us where you're at and where you wanna go, we will map out for you the strategy that it takes for you to get there and give you a customized eight page improvement plan plus an actual human that's gonna review it with you. It's pretty cool and it's gonna take you you know, 10 minutes or less in order to give us the information we need. So that is it, my friends. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification. And if you are looking for a community of like-minded entrepreneurs to collaborate and connect with, head over to our private Facebook group, Acquire. It's a great place to get connected with like-minded entrepreneurs. Do you feel more confident in figuring out your customer acquisition cost? I would love to hear from you. Leave us a comment and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.